Good afternoon. So, we are looking at the uh, problem of vertical profiles of radiative heating rate. Okay. So, we are looking at the energy balance, I think we got something like this, uh, for a particular right, what is the equation number for this? The la this continues from the last class, three. so the equation number 3. So, then we interchanged the differential and the integral sign and then we got it got this as Okay, this was equation number five. So, okay, I, I think I went through very fast in the last class. Couple of points: we are integrating over the four pi solid angle and not two pi solid angle because it's a volume. It's not from here to somewhere. Point number one. Point number two. Regardless of whether you have a two pi solid angle or a four pi solid angle, the zenith angle is only uh, the azimuthal angle is two pi only. Okay, so that's why I have taken it's only two pi. But instead of integrating cos theta from z, uh, zero to one, we have minus one to plus one. So the two pi for the five, the azimuthal angle, and minus one to plus one takes care of the four pi solid angle. Then we are converting this uh, dz to ds local coordinate, which takes care of the mu term okay so now this so 6 minus There is a row also, right? So, this is from the RT equation. Repeatedly, I am saying we should not say RT equation, but we say that. People will say CRC complex, CRC itself has complex. The dean also says CRC complex, we also say CRC complex, it is CR complex, right? What is it? That is not new, R, 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 hmm. okay. So, if you substitute. Hmm? 
B mu. So equation 9 can be used to find out the vertical profile of the radiative heating rate for a particular wave number or for a particular frequency at a particular layer or a particular level of the atmosphere. Is it okay? So, you can do it for various parts, various wave numbers of the infrared part of the spectrum. You can also do it for at various heights, okay, where you can get that kappa, kappa nu can be for as a function of height. You divide into various levels and then take at each of these levels. But now, as you know that the i nu minus b is, is very painful, that comes from the solution to the radiative transfer equation. Therefore, some simplifications have to be made. Okay, so uh, can be used to get IR heating rates. It is difficult to use, so we are looking at some approximate solutions. Okay, this is clear up to this stage. So the important points should be noted are solid angle four pi, solid angle four pi is azimuthal angle two pi, zenith angle is minus pi by two to plus pi by two instead of normally zero to pi by two. That takes care of this. The d i nu by d s as a row. This has a rho by C p because this comes from rho C p d t by d tau, okay, d t by d t. So, the rho and rho gets cancelled. So, if you know what is a kappa nu at a particular wave number, if you know the particle density r, if you know i nu and b nu is not very difficult, b nu is Planck's distribution, the i nu is the problem. If you know what i nu is, then it is possible for you to solve this. Of course, now with the modern day computers, there is no need for simplification, you can straight away crack this and go ahead, but people looked at simpler solutions okay, uh, in earlier days and uh, these simpler solutions are also elegant in the back of the envelope calculations you can get a quick, you can get a first cut estimate of the heating. Okay. So, let us see that. So, we will have to look at the approximate solution to the heating problem. Okay. So, that figure I have already given, right? actual this is a, the arrow show the energy balance okay you can have radiation coming from the top of the layer to that layer radiation coming from that from that layer to the next layer radiation coming from the bottom to this layer radiation coming radiation going out from this layer to the bottom layer and then radiation going out from this layer to free space now, many of these exchanges cancel out, therefore, you can consider as one layer which is isothermal, if the lapse rate is isothermal, uh, our lapse rate is 0, so that the whole thing is isothermal within this small layer, you can consider one layer of air which is, which has got all its constituents, CO2, H2O, methane, whatever, it is radiating to free space, that free space can be taken to be 3 Kelvin, 0 Kelvin, whatever, then it makes this life easier. So, we can get a handle on this equation 9 and get some simplified expression with which you can plot and then we can get an approximate solution to this problem. Okay. So, with that approximate solution, 
certain things are possible. So, I do not want to tell you the story a thin isothermal layer of air has got multiple exchanges and this thing in the in the infrared part of the spectrum it can be shown that the forward exchanges uh, exchanges into it and exchanges out uh, can be cancelled and only thing which remains is a uh, long wave radiation back into the open sky ok into the sky. So, that is what we are going to consider now if that is the case then P by C P. Ah, now comes a. I went too fast last week. Too fast. Okay. So that minus one to plus one has become zero to one. That means only in the forward direction, the upward direction we are considering. Are you getting this? Now this is replaced by this. Correct, because we are assuming that exchanges are cancelling each other, but now I am also making another R P nu of you can call it as uh, C, it is B nu of T and T is a function of Z, huh? is that okay? So, in my notes, I have got it as Z, it is okay. You can put it as T or Z because that can be related into e to the power of this actually that the integrating factor comes from the solution to the Schwarzer Schild's equation, which you have seen, right? I naught is equal to I lambda equal to I lambda naught e to the power of plus 0 to integral, correct? Then if you take the d i by d s, it will give that. If you take DABD, the first term will cancel off, the second term will remain. Now, it is possible for you to kappa nu r is it okay? fine no okay problem number problem number Problem number four, problem number forty eight for a tau for tau nu equal to point two for tau nu equal to point two so this will be what equation number ten for tau nu equal to point two obtain a simplified expression for tau nu equal to 0.2 obtain a simplified expression for the integral term in equation 10 is the question clear for tau nu equal to 0.2 obtain a simple expression or a simplified expression it is a long time since we solved some problem so we will solve this Okay, so
let us get this and solve it using the trapezoidal rule numerically integrate that okay please give the values yeah 0 0 1 na huh? 1 that point 2 is only representative you can show it for other things also ah. for point 2 huh? yeah that I know what is the value <laughs> huh? point 3 6 7 8 huh? Hmm. Hmm. Point four. Point six zero six. Point six. Point seven one six. Yes, sure. Which mu, mu is the denominator, right? Hmm. Point seven one six. Point seven seven eight nine. Huh? I did it before coming to class quickly, so maybe I made mistakes. Is it fine? And then point eight one eight. Huh? Is it okay? Yeah. How does the trapezoidal rule work? First term plus last term plus twice all the other terms divided by two. Huh? How does it work? Huh? So into the interval width right interval width was 0.2 this will get into a spin you try integrating it integral u dv is u v minus integral v du that v du will again then it will keep on keep on keep on it will pain you how much is this Akil. Seven. Okay, very good. Zero point five seven. So please do this. How much is this? Mu bar is 1.66 or 1 by mu bar is 1.6? 't will be half of this or twice of this something is related to that no how much are you getting 1.18 uh? 1. Huh? No. 
1.66 into 0.2 we have to say. So, e to the power of minus 0.3 into 1.66. How much are you getting? Do not substitute mu bar equal to 1.66. 1 by mu bar is 1.66, correct? 1 by mu bar is 1.66. How much are you getting? Huh? 1.29. No. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. You got some point five seven five, na? So five seven or five eight something? I don't know. Ah, five seven five or something. There is a two pi into two will give you some one point one five or one point one six. Therefore, this is approximately. This is one point one nine. So this is approximately equal to instead of two pi, one two is swallowed by that point five seven five into two. So this will be minus pi by C P K nu nu b into R b nu e to the power of minus this thing by mu bar divided by mu bar, where mu bar is a diffusivity factor. Therefore, without taking resource to a computer or writing a, writing a photon code or a C++ code by some simplification, we are able to get the dt by dt of nu for in the infrared part of the spectrum. This is an approximate solution. So, this is called the cooling to space approximation. We can find out at various levels of the atmosphere what is the contribution in the short wave part and long wave part of the spectrum of carbon dioxide, water vapor, ozone and so on, okay, which will simplify the calculations. Now, I will show, yes, okay. So, ah. so this is the height, the apsis, the ordinate is the height, here is the rate of change of temperature, right side is positive, left side is negative. Okay. So, the long wave is given by dashed lines and the short wave is Okay, the long wave is given by this uh, dashed lines, and the short wave is given by the solid lines. Okay, let us look at water. Contribution of water is positive in the lower half of the atmosphere, then it decreases; it becomes negative in the upper part of the atmosphere. Okay, as far as carbon dioxide is concerned, carbon dioxide is same as the solid line, and uh, leave this. Leave, leave this uh, O3. Let us leave the carbon dioxide now for the present. O3, there is nothing in the lower part because there is nothing in the strato in the troposphere, O3 is not available. As you go up, you can see the contribution to the short wave and long wave part of the spectrum. Carbon dioxide is hidden in the solid line. The thick solid line represents the result represents the resultant. Now, if you see there is a decrease of dt by d tau. So, there is a cooling in the troposphere because of the radi net radiation. The net effect of all this radiative heat transfer using all your kappa nu, i nu, r into e to the power of minus, all that is basically there is cooling in the troposphere. In the stratosphere, all these effects cancel out, and so there is no dt by dt in the stratosphere. So it is almost at the rate of the rate of change of temperature. This is per day is almost zero in the stratosphere. Okay, so stratosphere is always close to radiative equilibrium. The troposphere is not uh, in the radiative equilibrium. Therefore, there is a temperature difference between the day and night. So, there will be some cooling which will be taking place. Stratosphere experiences no cooling. So, is that okay? So, this is the idea of uh, okay. And uh, why the water vapor effect is not there pronounced at higher altitudes and all that in stratosphere, you do not get so much water vapor. All right. The last part which I want, which we want to discuss before closing this chapter is basically remote sensing I have already told you remote sensing uh, okay first I will discuss this and then the remote sensing this is an important physical concept the heating of clouds this is Z. Huh? So, there is a cloud like this. Okay. There is a cloud like this. This is the cloud base. So, this is the cloud top. 
please tell me what are the radiative transfer processes which are taking place from the cloud. No, no, solar radiation. Solar radiation can cause up to 10 to 20 degrees per day. That, um, that much amount of heating it can cause. Okay, then re radiation. Assume that there are no clouds about, above it, is re, re radiation to freeze outer space. This can be 50 degrees centigrade per day. This is the earth surface. Here also some heating can take place, is not it? What is this heating? The heating which is taking place because the earth is earth is emitting, correct. Earth is emitting to the bottom of the cloud. Okay. Let us look at the let us look at the night time. The solar radiation is not there. Okay. There is a heating from this. Okay. But this is not sufficient to take care of this re radiation to outer space. Outer space basically is at 0 or 3 Kelvin. The cloud may be at 270 or 280 Kelvin or 250 Kelvin or whatever. Therefore, the, the cloud continuously loses heat by radiation, its temperature decreases. Actually, this will this this further enhances the lapse rate. Therefore, this naturally promotes convection. So, convection convective activity is more during the night. That is why night, early morning, and the morning it is all right. Suddenly, you will see early morning Chennai there will be heavy rain. The Chennai morning heavy rain is not fully understood. Bangalore they call office rain exactly at 5 30 in the evening. Bangalore it will rain. Bangalore people will know 5 30 in the evening it will rain exactly. So, 4 30 onwards it will become Chennai morning 5 o'clock it will rain. Okay, the school they will declare holiday by 11 o'clock everything is fine. <laughs> Okay, so that morning rain is a subject matter of if somebody wants to do a BTP, you can do with me. We will investigate the morning rain, we will take the satellite data, this thing, we will put some model, we will aqua planet, we can do some, some if somebody is interested. Okay, that morning rain is a night time and morning time, this solar radiation is not there. Therefore, the heavy re radiation from the cloud, the cloud cools off, therefore, the it promotes convection. But during daytime, this 10 to 20 degrees per day, there is a solar radiation coming onto the cloud. So, this rapid cooling is partially controlled. That is why during the day 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, you do not see heavy convection unless of course, there is a big system already a depression or a trough is there. So, the convection is pronounced more, convective rain is pronounced more, more, pronounced more in the, is seen more in the evening time or the early morning time. Okay. Now, uh, do we have internet on this? The last part, just few minutes, I will just give a 3 minute course on remote sensing. I have already talked to you about this. Remote sensing you can do in the visible part of the spectrum, the infrared part of the spectrum. Okay. In the uh, visible part of the spectrum, it is available only during daytime. Original satellites they used to have pictures in the 30, 40. If you get pictures of clouds, they will say it is a big achievement and all that but night time it is not available. It will give you only the distribution of clouds. Okay, no more information uh, Information beyond this is not available. But if you do by infrared, if you do by infrared, first of all 24 hours, 24 by 7 coverage is there. Okay, And the radiation which is coming from the top of this clouds can be captured and then you use the Planck's distribution. We can find out what is the cloud top temperature. Correct? You can equate it. You can uh, equate the radiance to uh, C1 lambda to the power of by uh, phi minus phi divided by e to the power of c2. If you know what is the lambda, okay, you can actually get the cloud top temperature. When you get the cloud top temperature from other information, if you know what is the lapse rate of the atmosphere, you can actually find the height of the cloud. So, the height of the cloud can be inferred remotely. Then you can find out the distribution of clouds, various regions where and then you can see whether a convective storm is building up, a storm is building up and so on. So, cloud top temperatures can be obtained. This visible part of the spectrum is uh, more uh, okay for distribution of clouds and aerosols and other things. The water vapor channel, there is some, so this, uh, you 
in IR there is a 10.7 micrometer channel okay then we also have a 6.7 micrometer is basically the water vapor channel we can actually see the concentration of water vapor and all this now let us see the water vapor channel all right right now we have two satellites whose pictures are coming to us regularly the insat 3d and kalpana they are coming i think so okay so insat 3d mid infrared let us see the situation now in india so this is 7th at, uh, 7th november gmt is 8 o'clock 130 is not far off just an hour back so not much activity you see that there is a system which is east of chennai which is likely to go up okay yeah. and if you see you want to see the okay so that is the if you want to see the water vapor channel that will give you an indication of water vapor related to humidity and okay there is there are some clouds there is some water vapor over chennai but the main activity is here now okay now the older satellite is the insat 3d infrared picture you see 815 that is 145 okay so this, that is the okay now the sum total the integral over the complete wavelength the outgoing long wave radiation can also be captured that is called the olr so for the kalpana you can see the outgoing long wave radiation this is the outgoing lo long wave radiation okay in watts per meter square so as you can see if there are heavy clouds and all that the outgoing dips so it is between 100 and 150 that violet color on an olr represents a system okay orange color can be is very high can be seen over the desert regions somewhere it is very hot here it's all your gulf all right rajasthan also will be like this so chennai is little cool you see that cloud cover is there and all right now if you want to see the wind pattern you can see what is called the cloud motion vectors so the cloud motion vectors the number of uh, this thing no pointers gives you so many knots so many nautical miles per hour so this is the wind pattern so the winds are coming from this northeast okay and they will go like this so and now the what about the precipitation estimation so it's supposed to be raining little bit in chennai it's not right now but this is subject to error but if it you have to worry about this orange and red color and all that that means it will definitely rain in those places okay so you can do what you can do is you can actually go to chennai has got a website the india meteorological department of chennai this is in from nungambakkam okay so they give numerical weather model so you can actually do the this wrf what we also run weather research and forecasting model this gives the rainfall 24 hour rainfall if you start with the model from uh, today 5:30 and calculations have been run up to tomorrow so this is the rain for the day 1 okay prediction So this is the day two prediction. That is day after tomorrow morning. So, oh, Andhra, okay. And then day three, Monday, ah, uh, Monday morning. Uh, valid up to Monday morning. So the system is pushing, is going towards northwest. So it is dissipating, as you can see, the orange color is going off. So we will still get some rain because Chennai is 13 degrees. So we'll get some rain day after tomorrow. Okay. So you can. Uh, if you want you can do other things so you can keep on spending time and so that's about it so uh, radiation can and you can actually animate this and then have a time series you can predict also but if you have doppler radar is more accurate 